Digital technology, it's amazing. Let me give you a few examples why I believe this is so. Virtual reality, it's been around for quite a few years, since about the 60s, but it's now being used in anger because of the affordability of headsets and the advancements in software. So virtual reality is used for training, for learning, for education. It immerses you into a situation that you may not be able to do in the real world. So take Fire Brigade. You can put them inside a burning building with no harm. So virtual reality is really flexible as you move to learn people and create these skills. Augmented reality. In the medical industry, it is advancing science. So you've got scientists, you've got doctors, you've got surgeons that now can overlay the internal workings of the body on the outside. So they know where to make that first incision. Doctors can work on diagnostics, understanding the body better. Couple that with AI, and then you've got something that can work out, understand different diseases, understand different remedies. And AI goes even further. AI can look at our environment, our weather patterns, how, what is influenced in this world, and work out solutions. And then you've got currency. How do we deal with things on a day-to-day -day basis? How do we make it secure? Not many people carry money around now. It's all done electronically. Let me give you some other reasons why I think digital technology is so great. I've been working for, in it for the last 15 years, so I must be doing something about it. I built facilities. I've allowed engineers and designers to create the iconic vehicles that are out on the road. I've worked with students, PhD students, and mentored them in digital technology. As I mentioned, I build facilities, virtual playgrounds, where you can actually bring all these ideas to life. And then as I go about my business of the day, I like to stay connected. And as it was mentioned, this is all connected by the Internet of Things. So the Internet has expanded to connect all these devices together. You've got your fridge, you've got your coffee machine, you've got your home heating, you've even got your doorbell. They're all connected through the Internet of Things. And then they're controlled by this little miracle in your pocket, this smartphone. Organizes your life, your work diary, your social life, your health and fitness. It even orders your food. But there's a downside. There's always a downside to everything that we do. We spend a lot of time looking at screens, interacting. People, you've seen these people walking down the road, I'm one of them myself, and you're just looking at the phone and you think, well, am I going to move out of the way or am I not? Let them walk into me. It's a different way of interacting with data in the world. We've also got that frustration. So we've all opened up a computer and then all of a sudden the wheel of death comes on. And you're thinking, what do I do? Let's press a few more buttons. <laughs> then your computer is thinking, I've got to catch up. And then if you're really, really lucky, you get a blue screen. It's a nice colour, but it means something really bad has happened. So the frustration is born out of not understanding, but also that the technology is not intuitive to how we believe things should work. So we get frustrated. We also get fearful. Now, there was a survey a couple of years back that said half of the UK public were frightened of the future. What's it going to be? Robots are going to take over. AI is going to be so intelligent, we're going to be surplus to requirements. Scary thing. But it's not down to the understanding. It's down to how we understand how the technology is evolving. Fear only comes from something you don't know. You don't want to go around the corner because you don't know what's around there. But if you start to understand what it is, you don't fear it. You don't get frustrated. This is the language of the internet, digital. You look at that and go, what's that all mean? Now, there are probably people in the room that say, I know what that means. I understand it. And they're coders. They live in this, this world and write this language. But also, AI writes the language. So again, it's one of those worrying factors. What is happening? But if you go to a different country, there's a language barrier. You can't understand what the people are saying to you, and they can't understand you. You just speak louder. <laughs> but that interaction, over time, you get to understand each other. And the language doesn't matter. There's interactions, there's, there's gestures, and they get the message. So understanding that language, we don't fully need to understand what's going on in that, as long as we control in the direction it is going. Because it is going. The future is inevitable. It isn't stopping. That digital train is leaving the station.
And your city, like many cities in the world, you've got to ask yourself, have you got a seat on that train? Have you even got a ticket? I would say not. Because I've seen a lot of things that are based around digital strategy. And they don't seem to piece things together. So getting a ticket for that train is important. So I have this vision. Sounds dramatic. I break it down into very simple things. Three. Like a blueprint for a house. If you're building a house, or an extension, if you're looking enough, you need three things. You need materials and tools to make it work. You need a direction. So you build a foundation, and you build on top. And then the people that are going to live in it, it has to be maximized for them. It's the same thing with digital technology. These three elements together work. On their own, they don't. The sweet spot is in the middle. So let's break them down into little bits. Digital technology. This could be a little bit of a, oh, I don't know what all that is about. You've got digital strategy in, three, in four sections. You've got data, information, connectivity, and experience. The data is all about that internet of things I mentioned. All of that stuff, that information coming off these devices is going somewhere. It's going into the cloud. The cloud, and there's many clouds, is storing this data. So we need to organize, to put some standards, to tag that data. Then the information strategy. How do we build that intelligence? The AI, the machine learning. How do we connect those neural networks? This is done because the data is organized. It makes it easier. How is it connected? I mentioned about the circle of death, but we've all been there with a the phone trying to get a signal, standing on boxes. 5G is coming in. Fiber, optical fiber. It's advancing more and more of that, so we'll get connectivity. But it needs to be in real time. We've not got there yet, but we're heading in the right direction. And then the most important part of it is the experience. How do we experience this data? This data has to be intuitive. It has to involve our senses. It has to become what we believe that data should be prescribing to us. Let me take it a step further. Guy walking down the beach, he's got his daughter in his hands. He can feel the sand between his feet. He can feel the water lapping on his feet. He can feel the wind. He can hear the noise of the waves, the heat from the sun, and the warmth of his child in his hands. This is all data. These are all data that are coming in through different sensory points. That data is transferring to the brain. The brain then does the intelligent bits. It works out. It pulls back memories. It understands what's going on around it. And then it builds a picture of what this guy is experiencing. It's the same thing with digital technology. We take the data. We give it intelligence. We create the experience. And then it's intuitive to how we live our lives. Because what we don't want is to lose our identity with things like this, where interactions are digital and not human. Because we need to be in tune with the future. And then we wouldn't fear it. Artificial intelligent robotics should enhance our lives. Because we are very complex people. You heard some talks this morning about the different challenges we have as people. Emotions. And a lot of digital technology is being linked to well-being and mental health. But that's because you're bombarded with data, with information. That's because you're taking down a different route that you're not used to. And your mind is trying to deal with the world around it and all this information. So it has to be in line and intuitive to as you go forward. Because you're balancing every day. That rope that you're balancing on, with all the things you're doing, needs to be taught. It needs to be safe. It can't be wobbling around. And if you, correct, if you do the correct way of de developing digital technology, that will be. But if you do it wrong, it'll shake it all over the place. Let me pull it back to the, to the vision. I've mentioned about the technology and how it interlinks with the people. But the technology needs a direction. It needs a digital ecosystem. So what's that? It's getting all these connections. It's getting that 5G, that, that fiber, bringing all these things together, understanding how that data works, but building as a plan. Your city has a plan, has a direction, connects all these different bits together, and your city gets investment. Investors like certainty. They like a little bit of risk, but digital is risk, because we still don't know everything about it. But if you get investment, then your city will grow. 
in line with that digital technology. And when you get investment, that means people come, skills, talent. And with skills and talent, you get more creativity, more hands. You've started that wave. You've got investment. You've got a plan. The people are engaged, and you've got more creativity. And then one of the most beautiful things about digital technology is it allows you to use your imagination. Now, you remember when you were young? In my case, it's, I have to really choose my memory. But as you ran around the playground, there was nothing stopping you, was there? Your imagination was putting everything in, for you, in front of you. Digital technology allows you to bring that imagination back. It takes away those barriers, those physical barriers that may stop you. It gives you another way of looking at the world, but it sparks your imagination. And that's the beauty of digital technology. So I've talked about a direction, the technology, how they interlink, and the touch points with people. But then there's the difficult part. Us, your city, like many cities in the world, people. What I'd like to do is take a look in the mirror. Each and every one of you, wherever you are in the world, take a look at yourself and tell yourself, honestly, how do you portray the city that you live in? Does it have a negative narrative? Do you say, I don't go down there anymore, or oh, I wouldn't be seen there, I wouldn't be seen there because of this? Is this picture that you're painting tagging your city? Is there people that don't even visit the city saying, I don't go there because I've heard this about it and it's not a place I want to go? So we've got to play a part. We've got to get that positivity about the city because it won't work. The digital strategy doesn't work without that positivity. Do you blame others? Is it everybody else's fault or is it everybody else's got to do this? Not you. You can quite easily sit at home watching Strictly Come Dancing, it's a personal favorite. Uh, but whilst you're watching it, you should be thinking, well, how can I play my part? We should be organizing workshops, working with local authorities, working with the government, working with big industries, small startups, bringing people together, building communities that say, this is how we want to move forward. This is how we want to create that digital ecosystem. Because what I see, in this city is a city that's risen before. A city full of creativity, a city full of imagination, a city that has been lit by a spark, a city of culture. We've been awarded it, you've been awarded it. And like anything that's been awarded to any city around the world, it opens a window to the world. And what we don't want is that window to open and the world to be looking in looking in, then looking away. Because once you open that window, you want them to look in. You want them to understand a bit more about that city, be excited about what it's doing. Want to ask questions, want to get involved. We do that with a plan. We do that with a strategy. I would say I'm ready for the future. As a city, we should be saying we're ready for the future. And anybody looking in, we would want them to ask the question, are you ready? We have a plan, come and join us, come and get involved. We can move forward. We can get an idea of how all of us can work together as a community. So this is difficult. I'd like to shake everybody's hand, but it could take a while. Um, around the world as well. It's just a commitment. Let's do a virtual shake of hands. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for entertaining me on that one. Um, a virtual shake of hands to go away and start thinking more positive about the city that you live in, more positive about the people around you, Talk to your friends, talk to your communities. If you go down the gym, start exploring technology. Don't be afraid of it. Don't think of, of it being a negative thing for the future because it's got so much good it can give. Talk to people, bring people together. Talk to the authorities, talk to the local councils, talk to whoever can have an influence, but play your part. Don't leave it to others because it is changing. The future is here. It is changing. The way we interact is changing. And as we evolve, we want to be in control as we evolve. Because that digital train, as I mentioned earlier, is not stopping, it's leaving the station. And any city in the world, your city, needs not only to have a ticket, 
or a seat, he needs to get up and get to the front of that train and start steering it. So once we start steering, we can start to control things. And like many cities in the world, including this one, we're at a crossroads. We fluctuate between stop and go. We've got the industrial age. In the industrial age, we're going, this is the way we do stuff. But that's changed. We can't keep going back to the industrial age. We are now in the digital age. We need to move forward. We need to let go of the past. We need to change. We need to transform. We need to press that button. Because it's not stopping. We press that button. And we work together. We build that creativity, that imagination. We have that blueprint for technology, that ecosystem that we can build. We build it the way we would interact with it. And then we don't need to predict the future. We create it. Thank you.